But this week we are going to do something different. And I'm going to tell you guys a creepy true story that I heard about that you can Google, look up, and see what you guys think. Um, again, I love hearing from you all. Um, and if you want more of this, or if you're just saying, you know, again, fuck off, Dana, go back to reading the stories. Completely heard. But... With that being said, today's story is about Todd Guybe. Uh, it's hard to gauge whether or not a lot of people have heard of Todd Guybe because his disappearance and subs, uh, subsequent death happened around 2005, which anyone over the age of 25 probably understands that this is right before the cusp of people really getting on the internet sharing the idea of things being viral. And so it's something I didn't even hear of until 15 years later, but it's something that I always feel creeped out about. So without further ado, this is the story of the mysterious disappearance and death of Todd Guybe. Todd Guybe was born in 1982 in Muskegon, Michigan, an area I'm somewhat familiar with because I was grown up in Big Rapids, Michigan. From everything I read about him, he seemed to have a lot going for him. 22 years old, his entire life ahead of him. He had found a job at Hager Distribution in Wyoming, and he loved being outside in sports. Now, this is important to remember later on. He loved being outside. And to me, that says, probably has a general idea of how to handle himself there. On June 11, 2005, he returned back to Michigan and decided to go out with some friends on that Saturday night. They started their night around 7.30 at a bar called the Half Moon Bar and Grill. They met some friends, and while they were there, they got another call saying that there was an orchard party somewhere out in the woods, and decided that they were going to go head out that way. Now, they left the bar around 9.30 and headed out into this wooded party. From everything I could gather from my research... It's mostly basically a keg party in the woods. Anybody that's lived in rural areas like I have understands it's a fun thing. Bonfires, lots of people all around. So a lot of times romance is in the air now. In June in Michigan, it's probably pretty nice outside. Sometimes there's snow, but I'm assuming it's pretty nice out. Now, while they're there, a fight breaks out. Now, Todd isn't a part of this fight, but some sort of fight breaks out, physical punches and Todd decides that he is not comfortable with this any longer so he leaves this is the last known appearance of Todd Guybe not the last time they heard of him but the last known appearance predicated by a fight that he wasn't even a part of it's a little strange but I've also been in situations where people get into arguments and fuck it I don't want to be around it Todd leaves right after. And in this next 10-minute window, Todd makes a series of calls that are really odd. And one he calls and tells a friend, I've had enough. And now I know with disappearances and deaths, you hear those words and you may think, oh, he tried to kill himself. I'm going to just have you temper that for just a moment. Just put a pen in it. If you want to draw your own conclusion on it, that's fine. But let's hear the whole story. That can mean a lot of things. He's been drinking. He's had to deal with fights and going to different places and walking home. <laughs> Maybe he's just exacerbated. Understandably so. Now, after this, he makes another call. There's other calls in between this, but this one in particular is interesting because it's going to be essentially the last call he makes. He calls another friend. And tells them, I'm in a field. And then the phone dies. Well, it dies isn't the right word. It cuts out. The friend, of course, it's one in the morning. Why is Todd in a field? Calls back. Now, Todd never said anything. But according to reports, all the person could hear was rustling and wind. Like someone was running. Eventually, the phone cut off. And that's the last time anyone heard from Todd Guybe. Later, he was officially reported missing. Over 1,500 police and volunteers, as well as 
different airplanes and whatnot, mounted a major search trying to find Todd. This young, bright, 22-year-old who just simply vanished out of midair. In this search, they also checked the road that Guybe would have taken to get home. But, alas, nothing was found. And it went on like this for a few weeks. No one was able to find Todd Guybe. On July 2nd, 2005, Todd was finally found. Now before I tell you how he was found, I'm assuming you can guess that he was dead. There's something I do want to make note of for people that don't fully understand. How a body decomposes and how certain deaths affect the body. When someone is ruled drowned, the big thing is water is in the lungs. When you stop breathing, when you stop dying, and then if you get thrown into a river, you're not breathing, so you're not putting in air anymore. It's the same thing with if you have a house fire. There's another woman who killed her own child. And the reason they figured it out was because she had set a house fire afterwards, but the child's body didn't have any smoke or smut or char or anything in there, in his lungs. And therefore, the police think foul play which I would think would be a good call on the police. Now keep that in mind. So on July 2nd, three weeks after he had gone missing, his body was found. But it wasn't laying in a ditch. It wasn't from an apparent suicide or anything of the like. His body was found in Ovidal Lake, which is two miles from Todd's home, right where this entire group of 1,500 volunteers and police had searched would not have been able to miss him, especially considering how he was found. Now, how his body was, we'll get back to. We'll end on that note. There was an autopsy performed on Guybe's body. He's been missing for three weeks, and it's not an apparent suicide, so they want to know if there's anything else going on. He was found to have no external injuries. But he had a blood alcohol content of 0.12. Now, this apparently, according to my source, who is listed in the show notes, gave police reason to rule it an accidental drowning. Their conclusion was that he had went out, gotten very drunk while he was out there on his own, wandered into the lake and died. But the oddities of this case continue. It's been three weeks that this person's been missing, yet when pathological experts look at the body, they state that, according to them, the composition of the body looks as if it had only been dead from two to five days. On top of that, on top of the alcohol, there was also antidepressants in his system. Now, according to all reports, he was not taking antidepressants. And according to doctors as well, alcohol in these forms of antidepressants can be a lethal mix. Which led people to think, maybe he got spiked. We don't know for sure, but I think the oddest and most telling detail of this case is the manner in which his body was found. He was found three weeks later in a lake that had to have been seen by one, at least one, of the 1,500 volunteers searching for him. Drowning victims generally are found bobbing up and down in the water. We all know what it's like, the dead man's float. But instead, Todd was found standing upright, arms crossed like one would sleep on a desk, and head in his arms, as if someone had specifically placed him that way. There's a diagram in the show notes, or an example in the show notes, of the position he was reportedly found like. And that's the story of Todd Guy. Now, there are some other possible explanations that people have given. Some people think it was the work of the smiley face killer. I see merit in that. I also am not going to go too in detail. If you've never heard of the smiley face killer, you should look into it. The high-level look on it is it's a group of people that go around and kill young, athletic men and make it look like drownings. 
and there's a string of murders or disappearances or accidental drownings if it's not real in the uh, early 2000s to mid 2000s that maybe give some credence to this idea and then of course Todd could have just drowned this could all be coincidental maybe he was wandering for weeks maybe he was depressed and no one knew but to me this story is there's too many holes and his mother agrees to this day Kathy Guy still is fighting to get this case reopened and if you'd like to find out more, there are links in the show notes. And that's the story of Todd Geib. The man found standing in a lake, dead. After three weeks of being missing. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's episode. I've listed my sources below and I really appreciate the work that they've done to help me get this episode off of the ground. Um... If you guys like these episodes, if you have critiques, or if you hate them, please feel free to let me know. I am not going to be offended. I did this because I wanted to. And if people don't like it, I'm okay with that. I hope you all are having a wonderful week. And I look forward to next week and hearing from you again. Goodbye now.